Webster's defines comfort food as food that provides consolation or a feeling of well-being, typically with high sugar or other carbohydrate content, and associated with childhood or home cooking. But why do we crave comfort food? And more importantly, is there a way to get that same comfort with healthier plant-based options? Hey there, I'm Terry with Globally Delicious, and I share tips on creating a plant-based lifestyle beyond just recipes. If that's something that you're into or want to be into more, hit the subscribe button below and look for a new video every week. And if you have something you're struggling with on your journey to be 100% plant-based, comment below and I'll help you. What is your favorite comfort food? Is it something that brings back memories of your childhood? One of the dishes that immediately brings back memories of my childhood is my grandma's chili eddy. This dish concocted by my grandma was made with a combination of chili and spaghetti. And just thinking about it makes me miss my grandma. She made it with meat and dairy, but I've been able to create a healthy meat-free version that I love. And you know what? I think my grandma would like it too. Comfort food gives us warm fuzzies and kind of gives us a hug from the inside. We need food to survive. So when we eat, our brain initially rewards us by making us feel good. When you eat something sweet or with carbohydrates, you feel happy because your body releases something called serotonin. It's that happy drug that is naturally created in our body. Side note, you can also get this burst of happiness from working out. However, a diet that's full of sweets or empty calories doesn't provide us with nutrients. Even worse, it provides us with harmful ingredients that would adversely affect our health over the long term. Eating comfort food provides us with happiness beyond the chemical reaction to serotonin. Comfort food brings us happiness because of the emotional connections we have with the food and the people or experiences that we associate with that food. For example, I remember as a child always having Campbell's tomato soup when I was sick. So that is associated with a feeling of being cared for. Even the smell of food can invoke memories. We eat comfort food for other reasons too. Some of us eat comfort food when we're stressed, anxious, or even lonely. Some eat comfort food like processed food because it's quick and easy. And some of us eat comfort food on special occasions like holidays and family gatherings. I can relate to all of these reasons. Can you? When I went 100% plant-based, I struggled with filling that void of comfort food. Salads are not comfort food in my book. I tried many different things to create that feeling of comfort food because I wanted to create that happy feeling but have more nutritious ingredients. Today, I want to share two of my favorite comfort foods. Cheesy Mac, and that's my take on macaroni and cheese but made without any store-bought cheese, and lasagna. This cheesy mac will make your tummy smile and give you a comforting hug from the inside out. Pause here for the ingredient list. Decide which add-ins you'll make. If using, caramelize onions and roast the broccoli. To make the cheesy sauce, add parboiled potatoes and carrots to a food processor with the rest of the cheesy sauce ingredients. The secret ingredient here is the sauerkraut. This is what'll give a tangy, cheesy pop when combined with nutritional yeast. Blend everything well. You want the sauce to be very creamy with no lumps, bumps, or chunks. Cook your noodles al dente, add the cheesy sauce and any add-ins, and combine really well. Then top with breadcrumbs and or crispy onions. Pop in the oven and get ready for elevated comfort food. This dish is great the next day too. Just warm it on the stove with a little almond milk. It is delish and super comforting. Bon appetit! Lasagna is a popular comfort food around the globe. You will love this lasagna made with vegetable bolognese and a special vegan sauce to replace the ricotta and cheese. Start by gathering your ingredients. Pause here to read the ingredient list. 
I like to make the bolognese sauce first since it needs to cook for a while. Add some diced onions to a pan and use a food processor to chop up the garlic, mushrooms, seitan, and walnuts. If any little pieces still need to be fully minced, just hold them out for the next round since it will take a few rounds in the food processor to get everything minced. Hand chop the zucchini squash and bell peppers. You can add other vegetables or substitute what is listed here. I like to use a combination of mushrooms, seitan, and walnuts because it gives a really nice texture to the lasagna, but you can use just mushrooms, which is still great. Add your sauce, diced tomatoes, herbs, and seasoning, and let that simmer for about an hour. Now on to the secret ingredient, bechamel sauce. This is an easy sauce to make and gives the lasagna a creamy yumminess. I really like how it even looks like fresh mozzarella on the top of lasagna. Cook it until it sticks to the back of a spoon. You can season your sauce with salt, pepper, and some fresh ground nutmeg. Next, prepare the noodles. I like to decide which direction the noodles will fit in the pan before I cook the noodles so I know how to place them when they're hot. The direction of the noodles will vary depending on the size of the noodles and your pan. Prepare all the ingredients in arm's reach so you can easily layer everything in your dish. When you cook your noodles, only boil them for about one half of the time indicated on the package and make sure you get regular noodles, not the no boil ones. Start by putting some sauce on the bottom of your dish so you'll eliminate any sticking. Then arrange your noodles. Add enough bolognese sauce to cover all the noodles and then top with the bechamel sauce. It's a good idea to cover all the corners of the noodles with sauce, otherwise they will get dried out and crunchy in the oven and you wanna make sure your lasagna stays moist. Smooth the bechamel sauce evenly around the same way you would place fresh mozzarella cheese. Did you know lasagna, as we know it today, originated in Naples, Italy during the Middle Ages? In many parts of Italy, traditional lasagna is made with bechamel sauce instead of ricotta. On the final layer, add a little sauce and then place the bechamel sauce in round blobs on top. As you can see from the finished lasagna, it looks like fresh mozzarella. Then pop it in the oven. What do you do if you have extra noodles? I love to make some lasagna roll-ups. These are great for tomorrow's lunch or after school snack. Just take any extra cooked noodles and add some bechamel sauce. Then top with the bolognese. Make sure you don't get too much sauce on the inside. I like to sort of flatten it out with the back of a spoon. And then roll them up. Make sure you add more sauce to the top so they don't get dried out. Place them in individual foil pouches and cook them with the lasagna dish. You'll have a great snack or lunch just by warming them up. You wanna bake your lasagna covered for about 20 minutes, then 20 minutes uncovered. It's done when it's bubbly and browned on top. Let it rest for about 10 to 15 minutes before serving. The bolognese and bechamel can be prepared in advance, which makes this dish a great one to serve when entertaining. I think the creaminess of the bechamel sauce is enough to replace both the ricotta and cheese. Each region in Italy has its own take on lasagna, and this is mine. I hope this lasagna becomes one of your new favorite comfort foods. So what did you think? They're pretty doable, right? I hope you try them out and they bring you comfort like they've brought me comfort. Do you wanna start your day with healthy comfort food? Grab your free ebook, Plant-Based Breakfast Boost, with ideas on how to start your day with a healthy dose of comfort, nutrition, and fiber to take you all the way to lunch. Link is in the show notes. Thanks for watching. If you found this useful, like and subscribe for more tips every Tuesday on how to be successful on your plant-based diet journey.